Good afternoon. I'm going to call the school board of Citrus County's regular school board meeting to order. And with that, uh, we apologize. We had a uh, couple of a, an executive and a shade session for safety and security. And so uh, that just delayed us uh, briefly. So we are getting started a couple minutes later. Um, with that, we will go ahead and turn over our voting exercises to the Honorable Linda P. Hathams. I feel very fortunate today. I've invited someone that I've known for a very long time. Uh, there's a student in our school system, in fact, he has a brother and sister who's also a student. Uh, his uh, his uh, sister did some work with speech and language for a company that worked with the school system, so we had a very long history. And one thing about John, his name is John Powers, no relation to me whatsoever. But one thing about John was, when you say an honest person, John is an honest person. When he was a little person, I'll tell a story about a little person, over at the house and he was playing, he was on top of the roof of the stable. And I went out and John had a hammer and he was pounding the roof of the stable. And I said, John, what are you doing? He said, making a hole in the roof. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> He's just one of those honest people. Uh, John has met some challenges in his life. He's overcome those challenges and he's going to share with us today a, a few of the things that he experienced, how he's overcome, what he's doing today. And I think he'll provide a very good example for many of our children who are facing the same type of situation. So with that, uh, I'll ask John to come up and, and uh, Mike and so we'll, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance after John speaks to us for a little while. Hello. Um, thank you. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank all, all you guys that volunteer all the time that you guys spend. Um, I know, you know, in some ways it's a job, but it's a lot more than a job. And that's where I had people like Miss Linda um, really help when I was a kid. My parents couldn't figure out why I was doing so bad in school. And, uh, and this was, I think, in third, second grade, third grade, right in there. Um, so some of this I don't remember. I actually had to call my mom on the way and was kind of like, you know, hey, what was wrong with me? <laughs> with disability, we're learning disabilities. Um, so I had a couple. Um, but Ms. Linda really helped helped us uh, find out what was going on, get us the proper testing. Miss Whitmire, who I forgot all about, my mom said, really fall for me. And I think that was fourth grade because they put me in a class with uh, troubled kids that were just in trouble attitude wise not learning disability she fought to get me and she's like no he's not like that he needs to be in this class and so you know she they really fed into me with love and then i ran into coach roland and <laughs> a lot of us probably remember coach roland coach roland fed into me with the paddle um, but <laughs> but coach you know coach roland um you know, it was when I played football and basketball in like seventh grade, eighth grade, and he he would take his lunch with me, quiz me on test. He would take us home. There was quite a few of us that he would take home, and I'll never forget. I mean, I hope this is okay. Um, well, he just passed, unfortunately, but he would take us home around his table and quiz us. His wife would quiz us as he walked around the table with his paddle on his back, just tapping his paddle. And if you missed a question, you stood up and he would just give you a little, just a little love pat. <laughs> but I tell you what, that year I went from like a, a D student to an A, B student. Um, I mean, I got all kind of like most improved, I mean, all kinds of awards and stuff. Um, so it was, you know, it was like you're mad at him, but in the same sense, he really showed me I wasn't dumb. That, it, you know, I just had to apply myself and I just had to, you know, um, and learn the right way. You know, um, that makes a big difference too on how you learn and stuff. So again, thank you guys. Thanks the teachers um, for what you guys do. It's awesome. Um, later on in my years, I got into a lot of trouble partying. Um, 
I remember making the tennis team. I don't know if you remember this, but I don't know if I should share this stuff. I remember making the tennis team. <laughs> and my dad, my dad was so happy. But I remember Coach Don said something about it. If I catch you guys at a party, you're running. I was like, oh, I'm out. Because <laughs> like, he caught me at quite a few parties. Um, some of y'all don't need to that <laughs> But, um, you know, again, you know, I, I thank you guys. Um, for, you know, showing us, showing me that, you know, that it was it was just how you learn, what you need to do to learn. Because now, I mean, now I own my own business. We're going on 13 years. Um, I got four guys in the field, two guys in the office, or two girls in the office. Um, I'm a pastor at a church. Um, we just, we started a church in Hernando going about six months now. Um, you know, and so... Even though I had those learning disabilities and I got in trouble with, you know, a lot of the partying and all that stuff that I shouldn't do, um, you know, it, it, there's there's always hope. There's always hope. And, and, you know, like the old Bible verse, you train them the way they're supposed to be, they'll come back. They never forget it, you know. So um, if it's okay, I'm going to pray for you guys or pray for the schools. And then Michael's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If y'all would bow your heads. Father God, we just come to you and I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for the work that they do. Lord, I pray blessings over them. I pray a spirit of excellence over them, Lord. I pray protection over every single school in Citrus County. I pray protection over our officers that are guarding it. I pray that you give them wisdom and the clarity to see anything that, that's out of the ordinary, Father God. Lord, we just thank you and we love you for everything that you do for us. Amen. 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 Who is Sam? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. You, you can see why, I guess, what, 25 years ago or something, I saw him and I thought, this kid is good. <laughs> He's positive. He's a happy person. Thanks so much. Hey, John, tell Mom hi. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Powers. <clears throat> Did you have anything before I, I, I turn back over? No, I was just. I just. Thank you. I just want to read. This is made a lot of difference, and you did a lot of things in the show. I'll stop going down that path, and I'll be done with and I know both as a parent now with kids in the school system as well as he's, uh, he has uh, foster kids and, you know, done a lot and does, continues to do a lot for our schools and in the community. So, and he has uh, a sister-in-law in this room, um, and that is Miss Swain. And, uh, I'm glad he didn't tell any stories. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure your sister's going, what did he say? She <laughs> 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 So we, we do appreciate John, so thank you, Ms. Powers, for bringing that. We um, are going to adopt the consent agenda, but um, was there anything, was this anything to add? Um, or was this just the surplus? We wanted on the consent agenda. Okay, so. Okay, okay. So it's not been pulled, we just, we're, it was just supplemental information. No, no, we had to, we had to make an adjustment to it. It's been cool, but we had to make an adjustment to the Oh, I'm sorry, but I mean it's already on. I'm right. I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't have to make it. So we just need to then adopt the agenda as recommended by the superintendent. Second. Have a motion by Ms. Bryant, second by Mr. Don to adopt the agenda as recommended by the superintendent. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five zero. Citizens' comments. Any green cards? Yes. We will have another opportunity at 5.15 and at the end of business. Uh, approve the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Mr. Dodd, second by Ms. Counts to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. And then if you could read the recognitions. Yes. Um, approve the $1,000 donation to Citrus High School for sexual maintenance and welding and approve the $3,000 donation to Christopher High School from Curry's Blue Bank for a total of $4,000. Thank you, and we thank our community service. Uh, they have just continued to be very generous to us, and we thank all of you. Uh, we're moving on then to human resources. Ms. Swain.
Good afternoon. I ask the board's approval of the instructional and support recommendations as listed on the golden rod. Approval of the school board instructional and support personnel as on the golden rod. Second. Motion by Ms. Counts, second by Ms. Powers to approve the instructional and support recommendations. Any questions, comments? Job well done. I'd like to list the names on appointments. Me too. Yeah. Very good. We have a few more to go. We have a few more. Yes. How many more do we have? We have about 40 openings right now for instructional and about 23, 24 for support. And with that, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Motion carries five zero. Have a good evening. All over the city. Yes, ma'am, you do that. That's a good place to go to do some recruiting. If people with a quite tough idea about teaching in terms of the job I want to do, I want to get these kids to learn. You know, they really want to be a teacher. We will look into that. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, moving on to um, iPad insurance information. I know how excited Ms. Androsky and Mr. Fletcher are to share with us today. Good afternoon. Mr. Kennedy is correct. We are excited. This is something that we have been actually investigating for the previous year. We wanted to present this information to you, and Mr. Fletcher is handing out a flyer. We have actually researched several different companies that offer parents the ability to purchase iPad insurance on a yearly basis for their iPad. And after careful deliberation, deliberation, we feel this company offers the best option for parents. It's for $29 a year, $29.95, and they purchase that through the, the parent purchase it through a portal, and it's an agreement between the parent and the company. So we would just merely be offering this service to parents. Then if they purchase it, there is zero deductible. They can have unlimited claims. So it covers things such as the crack screen, the, if the charging port is damaged, if there's mechanical failure. It also covers if it's stolen, it will pay the price for the iPad. So instead of the student having to come up with the money to replace the iPad, the insurance company would offer that, would pay that to the school. So. As a parent that was paid for a cracked screen, just me who cracked it, um, I appreciate that we would be able to offer this. It's, it would not be mandatory, of course. It would be something that we would set up for the parent and they could sign up and they could purchase it if they are interested in doing so. And I know through the years we have had numerous parents asking if there was insurance that they could purchase for the iPad. And $29 is a significant savings. If a screen is cracked once, it's a $90 bill to repair that. So even if it's lost, they can file a claim and then it would take care of that. Do you have anything else you want to add? <coughs> I mean, you can see everything that it, sorry, it, you can see everything that it covers. Um, there isn't much that they wouldn't be able to get uh, taken care of with this insurance. It seems pretty impressive. It is impressive. Why do you, why do, you do this? It's I think that's it. Um, you could pay the thirty dollars for your child, and then at the end of the year, if nothing happens, give them the thirty bucks, like a sixty-dollar investment for a child taking care of. This is a parenting moment by... No, 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 she's saying it's a motivation. This is, this is motivational only. That's not, a, that's not a bad idea, Miss Brian, instead of threatening your children like I do with mine, and then I was the one to actually cause the damage. No, that's a good idea. If you, yes. That's right. <laughs> Just keep in mind, we're not entering any agreement with anybody. We're making, we're, uh, we've been uh, asked uh, by parents to provide. And we've done that. We're provided. And so what we've done is research what we consider to be the best option out there for parents that, uh, you know, make no representation for more. That is a contract between the parent and, uh, and the 
insurance company? We're just letting them, giving them, and giving them things? We just, we either want the iPad back or the money to the parent. That's all we do. So the, hand, the money would be exchanged between the parent and the company on that portal. We would not be involved with collecting the money or anything. I've got a question for you. So if it's lost and they replace it, how do we ensure that that's going to be in the back of the inventory and was going to take it out? Because that would be the IMO that we put it So they would have to replace it with the exact same device. And we had confidence right. that they would do that. Correct. Either that or they would replace it with the simply give them the money for the device and get the money. And then we could purchase or replace it. We might we we hold the student responsible for the iPad for the cost of the iPad. So if it's lost, then they owe us the cost of the iPad and return the iPad. So if the company gave the parent the check for three hundred dollars, then the parent would turn around and give us the money for three hundred dollars. That's that was between them and the company, it's their business. We just want the three hundred dollars from the parent for the iPad. We're just giving them another option. So we have themselves, they can put thirty dollars out. Kathy's right. We've been asked this since the day we rolled out the first iPad. Isn't there any kind of insurance program we can buy relatively inexpensive to protect this? Because parents understand middle schoolers occasionally will drop it. They might even be tempted to throw it, but if they knew they were going to make money for keeping it together. <laughs> so it's simply, uh, we just it's simply like Mr. Bradshaw said, for informational purposes, we want to make you aware of what, of what we were able to find and let parents <coughs> be made aware that this is an option. Uh, certainly still an arrangement between them and the company, and, and uh, we're just simply giving them a way not to be on the hook for the $300 later. Do you have any questions? Well, I'm just looking at our, our next item and this a whole page of, of broken, outdated, useful parts and stuff like that. So have we been paying for all these broken ones that we're about to say we surplus? So what happens there is sometimes the, those iPads or devices, the cost of the repair is greater than the value of the item. And so then in that case, we surplus it. Sometimes it also is the fact that due to the age, it just cannot be repaired anymore, and so then we surplus that. Would this, how would this insurance company? Well, if it's if it's ours and it's just outdated, it's not going to happen. Okay. Right. If it's yeah. if it's broken. We don't charge students because they have an iPad too and no longer downloads apps because that's right. just outdated. Right. Yeah. Oh. So if they would yes. be charged if they dropped and broke the screen or if they uh, dropped it in water and it ruined the device. That's uh -huh. what they would pay for. The Okay, this is this the surplus stuff comes in broken, and I just wanted to clarify. Broken. Some of this we may have recuperated the cost of the screen, or we may have recuperated some of the expense. Some of it may just be because of the age of the device is being surplus because it's no longer valuable. It's no longer. And this the cost. And I, I understand <coughs> when we move an iPad in. I heard a lot of discussion about I don't want my kid to have an iPad because I don't want to be responsible for it. So this offering them something like yeah, this. Yeah, when you reduce that to thirty dollars, that's less than they can be responsible for the price of the textbook. If they lost the textbook. Right. Lost and they're the under no obligation to take the insurance, but they're under an obligation to pay if the child breaks it or loses it. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So up to them. We just have to say we are offering it. It's just a service we just try to And a lot of the numbers, and I know we'll talk about it in a second, but a lot of the items on the uh, um, on the disposal surplus list are actually Dell items. And, and yeah, and, and actually quite a few of them are from the Academy of Environmental Science. Yeah. They're not they're not ours. <laughs> so but it just because they're not iPads and which are that, that's what got it. Yeah, that's it's just and, and unfortunately that's not uh, it's not within ours. A couple just quick questions I have I love this. I know Miss Androsky you from the iPad pilot on you have looked for a product which I think I want to say it's six or seven years you've been working in some form on this. So I appreciate you bringing this forward. Um, so we are not the facilitators, is what I understand. All we're really doing is handing them information or providing maybe a link. We provide a link, and then if they're interested, the parent clicks, they go into the storefront, and then they 
sign the contract with them and make the payment to the company directly. Is there, are, is in any way, are we going to be able to know that, okay, of the X number of deployed iPads, X number percentages insured, so that we, we know that they have a thousand insured and we maybe deployed, you know, 3,000? Yes, we actually, okay. we have a way to, we have an account that we can go in and, and log in and see which iPads have insurance, and then we can help facilitate with the student and, and give them a loaner. So we know that you have a insurance plan and you're gonna send your iPad off for repair. So while that's being repaired, here's a loaner and we can monitor which iPads have the insurance purchased for them and which ones do not, yes. Good, because that was my thing, is, is to make sure you guys weren't out of the loop on something that, that we were gonna have. And then I know, you know, you guys are trying to get this to us as quickly as we can and just open house nights didn't entirely overlap, but we still have some opportunities. And so is there a way we're going to be able to articulate some of that in multiple forms so that parents, because I know I for one am going to get the insurance for my child. Um, and and I, I know this is a silly, but it's a fair question. What about teachers? If they wanted to, to get it because you know, teachers can be in the same situation as students. They right. sometimes lend them to their students too, you know? Well, I hadn't thought about that. That's a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and, and you don't have to, that was just, you know, it was just more of a... We, we did talk about that, um, you know, especially, again, I go back to, I've already paid $100 one time myself, and so I, I we both said, well, I would buy it for myself just to... Yeah, I mean, thirty dollars is better than peace of mind for me. Peace of like mind, that, but, but right, generally we do we take care of the teacher device. And and I would also just say the the uh, the new covers. I like them a lot. I I don't know that people realize they actually are very effective. Um, they just kind of look because they're so sleek. They look like they maybe aren't as effective. And from what I can tell from the the data, they actually are, are sometimes more effective than some of the other versions we've had. So. Correct. The OtterBox gave the illusion that because it had the shield that rested on top, that it added an additional barrier. But, well, one, a cover is only going to be as good as if you place it on there. And so they, they more often work on the back side and not on the front side. But they the four edges cracked easily and broke, and then it wouldn't stay on the device. So, no, we're, we have not seen that this um, version is is not holding. It's holding up well. We haven't. Do I have any reason to believe that it's not holding up as well as the OtterBox? Mr. Pat, yes, so we are a, in agreement, though, that if the parent buys the insurance and the iPad is lost, the money that the insurance company is going to pay for the iPad is what we're going to accept as a replacement, right? Correct. Because I, I don't because we're paying more than three hundred dollars for an iPad. We paid two ninety it was two ninety four, but I noticed on the site it's two ninety five, the case is thirty five. So it comes to about three twenty nine with the okay. case. Yeah. So but if they would depreciate, let's say it's a, a year old iPad. We, we would do the same thing. We would we, we will take that right from so they say well, we're only gonna the value of that iPad that was lost for only two hundred twenty five dollars and they send the parent a check for two twenty five. We're gonna accept that as payment for that price, right? Yes. Because okay. we've always done that depreciated if it's a you know uh, year old iPad, we depreciate the value of the charge of the cost of the So in some ways we're gonna agree to what this insurance company values the, the unit as, right? I mean, and, and we're gonna accept that from our our uh, Correct. Mm -hmm. right. And then we talked about leasing <coughs> uh, equipment rather than buying it or owning it, and this would cover those two? Yes. And you're confident that what they value it at, it will be a true value? Yes, they replace it with, or the, the replacement is of the one that you have. So if it's a Generation 6, that's the most current I've had out, then that's what they value it at what the cost of a Generation 6 is at the time. So yes. Okay, it's pretty much strictly an age thing. Even though we're not going to be able to buy a Generation 6 to replace it, but yeah, but it's, that's fair. I mean, if the parents are going to give this to the parents as an option, then we I accept that it's, this is what we will take. The screen cracking, how does that... We are giving the parents anything except for the information. 
I mean, I just want to make that clear. We it's, know, not right. it's not a recommendation for the school district or an option. Or it's a, you know, they can go get iPad insurance anyplace else. We're just providing a name. Almost like, I know, but photos. Like they can go and get I photos. Mean, we can go to 100 different places just because we said that, you know, here we found some car insurance. Okay. okay. Well, with that in mind, then, should there be an incentive for the school board to endorse a plan? Should they be? We're, we're not asking you to endorse a plan. No, no, this, no, no, this is just saying this is what we're going to do. No, this, they don't have to do anything. That we're offering this, that we've researched various companies, and this appears to be the one with the best benefits, and that we're just going to well, say, here's a link. It. We're here to no, sell it. No. You're not spending any money on it's it. Kind of like, it's kind of like the vaccine thing, you know, we put on there. This is what the health department wants. We're not endorsing it. You figure it out on your own. We're just providing some information. We're just going to allow it to be given out. If we endorse it and then right. something that the insurance company doesn't do what we're supposed to do, then yeah. we can be on the board for it. So we're not endorsing it. So should we be given, giving them some other options then? They can figure out other options if they want. It's just, this is just strictly informational. Hey, we found a place that does it. You know, and go, go, check it out on, go check it out on your own. No representation or warranty. And I think what we've found over the years is that this would allow us that conversation to say to parents, well, we did give you an opportunity, you know, or we gave you information if you were interested in purchasing uh, some insurance when they say, well, I lost the $300 iPad. And that's, well, we haven't had that option. We haven't had something to say, you can go and do that. This would give that on us that. So I would like to say this, since we're not endorsing it, I would like to say whatever information <coughs> goes out to parents, that they are aware that there are other options that they have. This is this is a, an option. I talked to Ms. Nikoski about putting something like that, saying well, we're not endorsing the product, we aren't right. representing the world. And then other insurance companies may, other insurance options may be available yeah. to you. Yeah. Caveat. Yeah, caveat. Yeah. But, I, I mean, we were, there wasn't a big market for a long time. Yeah. There was no market for it. Right. And we kept searching for that when we finally came up with something. This isn't like it's a, where there's going to be 100 providers out there, like the right. general bar insurance or something. This yeah. is not the case. You're not gonna, they're not going to find a lot of options for this. And this is a, good cost effective option and and there are a lot of choices i mean you can buy get your photos from somebody else for your school year especially for your senior year it doesn't mean you have to use who the school has um and, and i don't think we warranty those types of things either so i think there's it to me falls into that i just think us having something that we can point parents to and say this is at least an option for you is a lot farther than where we are today. It, uh, so, and but but I screen crack screens are always you know probably the the reality. So do they are they going to give a check that then we we would get for that or are they? I'm wondering because I know we're repairing a lot of those now. They're, they're so. dealing with the parent. They're going to pay the parent. We're all our relationship with the parent. So, but we, so will we just collect them saying from the parent? We're that? collecting it from you, whether you have insurance or not. You owe us a hundred dollars for the screen. And so that, and that's what I was just going to say. So I think that goes back to that question, though. If, if what are they paying us then for the screen? And I think that's what Mr. Dodd's saying. Does it cover what we are saying that we would have charged? And them? that's what Kathy checked to make sure that they're comfortable with what we're paying. So the company, when the parent goes in and files a claim, I, I did check, and I believe you checked again more recently, the iPad, you know, we have to go through the, VIN, um, the bid process to have an iPad repair person. That company can repair the iPad for the parent or student, and then security pays the repair. That company. Mm -hmm. So... And make sure it gets repaired because really that's what we're after is making sure that the cracked screen is repaired so if if they'd rather that we we have parents do that now they take it to yeah. the yes they repair it themselves it doesn't matter to us it's just go back working on the screens and are we i don't i couldn't recall i thought we were doing some of those repairs yes we have started the process of that we had a more than we can handle in-house right now just and we could in the time frame to get them out into the school so we did send them off to our vendors so that we're ready for the new school year but yes we have begun the process of repairing crack screens and ports and things ourselves so would that change any of this 
process if that's a claim? Will we? Will it always be the outside vendor then that does them if it's if it's from this? We do have the option to okay. repair them ourselves, and then they would send us some parts. So they would send. Would they send the bill then to you or the we'll, payment to you? They yes. The company would. The company would. I told Lance I'd rather not get into that right now. I'd rather. No, I, I understand. But that's what I think was the quite That was to me that part process. So, so, so there's some options. We do have options. I just felt like for now, if if you have insurance, you're a parent, and the screen is cracked, then you use the vendor um, to have it repaired. And then for the families that do not have it, we'll we'll work uh, in house to repair those. And for what it's worth, I actually had to go through a claimed this last year with a similar company with my son and I was shocked how fast and seamless it was. I thought I would have to provide all kinds of stuff. And there was a there was a couple things, but it was actually pretty straightforward for us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I mean these are these are becoming very popular in colleges and um, so I, I I'm excited about it. And I do want to reiterate, even if we repair it in house, like Mr. Mullen said, the family is still responsible for the price of the crack screen repair. Mr. Chairman, um, I had a question that I was going to bring up in my uh, school bill on school board members, but since Ms. Andros is here, it's that area. No, go right ahead. Um, on the Citrus Stock K 12 I thought on US website, I know it was down for a while, and I, I heard some information, but um, you know, we, that's, not, that's out of our control, I think. And so, what's the update on that? Just because that's the website I tell people to go to. I know we have the citrusschools.org, I believe it is, too. But can you just give us an update on that real quick? Well, the, apparently the state decided to upgrade some servers and they, they missed a bunch of zones in the DNS resolution. So we ended up finally getting in contact with someone and let them know that we were having issues and they were able to get us straightened out and get us, get us fixed. Because we, we, we have no control over that domain. We can't even put a security certificate on to the so for the protection of the web. So we weren't the only district impacted either. We would spot check and see how it was going with other districts because for about five days we, we couldn't figure out what the problem was and then I happened to reach out to somebody in Leon County and then they said oh this is what we did to fix it and then I said Lance can you contact this gentleman and I, I want to commend uh, Ms. Androsky and Mr. Fletcher poor Mr. Fletcher was getting my emails um, on the weekend, Sleep late at night, <laughs> <laughs> he does. Because I was like, Lance is not going through on the, uh, the citrus stock A12. And, and your entire team had to relocate servers, particularly for Skyward, because we had teachers coming back, um, schedules were trying to get out, and people couldn't access Skyward because it was on that server. And your team did an amazing job at trying to relocate that. Well, and the very unfortunate part of this is during this week, and it took a week to have it resolved, is that we were asking families to go in and complete their emergency form. Families were also going in to find out what school they were zoned for or what their bus would be for their child, and those were relying upon the Citrus K-12. So it was, I know, very frustrating for the families, and for that we're sorry. We definitely are sorry. But we have started, um, we're trying to move away from the Citrus K-12 just for this reason, but we are actually moving Skyward over to citruschools.org. So something ever like this happens in the future, it won't be an issue. And I think, because um, I've been like Mr. Dodd, I've, for years I've given the citrus.k12.fl.us. The trouble is, is that that's it's not entirely sunsetting, but it isn't the primary. I've also found that there's a lot of places, like if I log in on my phone to try and set it up, it defaults back to that as part of a reply email address in the system. And so that may need to be something that's corrected too, is, is that default reply, because that's what causes the things when I would send them out. I could send it directly using the other email address. But maybe as the board too, you might because everyone here may not know that they have a another email address that's that will all it's the same goes to the same box. The hard way. But I, yeah, I found it out that week too. I didn't know who I was. <laughs> and, and that that's um, that that is a challenge. But I, I do commend you guys because it was a lot of a lot of reading.
something too is there's a lot of incentives for educators that necessitate using that k12.fl.us as a verifying um, email. I mean, like if you're trying to get a cell phone, if you need an educator discount, you can't use the uh, ORG as a verifier. Um, so that that's a that's a challenge we have. I mean, who would know <laughs> or think that? But you know, it's become um, such a standard. Well, so. The flag is for teachers. So if you know the teacher's name and the initial, if you just try that as an address, and you can talk across the state. It's pretty well known. Okay. Any other questions, board members? Is there any other? input you needed from us on this? No, we just wanted to share the information. Thank you for your time today. Thank and Mr. Broadshaw, thank you. I know you've been working with them and answering some of those questions. Okay, and we're moving on to approval of disposal of active surplus properties. As we get into that, uh, there was an item on here, Mr. Broadshaw talked about doing research on this. It's not something on the list, so we have been pulling that Thank you, Mr. Shaw. It was an old driving simulator that they used for driver's ed. The driver's ed no longer used it. Instead of surplusing it, Air Force ROTC is going to use it to convert it into a flight center. Oh, that's so excellent. We're still getting some benefit. I'm going to approve the disposable active surplus property. Second. A motion by Ms. Bryant, second by Mr. Dodd, to approve the disposal of active surplus properties. Any more questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Oh, you can stay up there. Oh, but you got to No, you're good. Yeah. All right, so I met with you a couple weeks ago, and you voted on the tentative budget, so we have fervently been uh, working to work on the carryovers and the final expenditures, the final bringing in money still was coming in for the end of, of last year, money that's attributable to that, billing out everybody we needed to build to bring in revenue. And um, so we've been working on that and waiting for the state to send down, actually the state sent down the COMDS entries the same weekend that they did their change. And I emailed Lance and I said, why is the DOE website blocked by IBOS? And it really wasn't us, it was the DOE. But um, waiting for things like that to get in. So right now in the process, we're preparing the uh, budget book and the annual report. And those will come to you on September 11th. You will have um, copies of the budget book and the annual report. The, um, Friday before September 10th, which I think is 6, September 6, September 7, whatever that Friday is before the next board meeting, you'll have those. I will have hard copies for those of you that want hard copies, and I will email copies to all of you also. So um, those will be available when you'll be voting on that. And so that's where we're at right now. HR pushed over their last and final budget push pretty much the most you know secure one we have at the time before school started so um, there wasn't a lot of changes and um, that's where we are right now so on September 6th or 7th whatever that day is you'll get your documents and you'll vote on them on September 10th and um, that's where we're at any other questions okay all right have a good evening Dr. Heber, Mr. Bishop, yes, Mr. Mullen, yes, Mr. Dodd. Yes, um, well, we're getting a lot of things accomplished. Oh, you know what, I apologize. We can do the minutes. Okay. Um, it's my fault. I, uh, okay, that's fine. It, uh, approval of the minutes. Second. Motion by Ms. Powers, second by Ms. Bryan to approve the minutes. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any citizens' comments? And uh, we'll have a last opportunity at 5.15. Um, and I'm sorry, Mr. Dye, go right ahead. Okay, just so we kept on staying. 
exciting times here, right? We're underway with school, and the Welcome Back program was uh, wonderful, and all the work that went into that program is just, uh, you know, I think it sends a great message to our faculty members and students, especially. But, uh, Mr. Antonetti was a great speaker. I'm glad, I'm glad he stayed on that, uh, that uh, from last year, so thank you for doing that. Uh, Ms. Simmel and um, all, all the staff that was involved with making that program uh, such a, a great kickoff. Um, you know, as we, we have these agenda, you know, there's a lot of things that we sent. We do a lot of, you know, we ask questions behind the scenes and everything. And one of the consent items, though, was the funding agreement for school safety funding with the county. And man, I tell you what, I'm so pleased that our county commission is continuing to fund our school safety. You know, one, um, one million four hundred forty-eight thousand six hundred forty-three dollars we put down and consent, and that is a great um, part of our security and safety for students. We know that school safety is part a part of this community, and we never want to have any debt. Uh, uh, that happen here or anywhere on our campuses. We want kids to be safe and, and feel safe and protected at school, the faculty members, and to and from school as well. So that funding, and, and Ms. Hemmel, I appreciate the work that you do behind the scenes with the commissioners and, and with the county administrator, because that is what allows us to have the security that we have in our schools. And even though we're funding the Guardian program 100%, um, we were able to make that training happen and to have school resource officers still there in place at every school and that is uh, that is great for um, student safety and i really do appreciate it. i just want to make sure that was um, mentioned um, the ipads i know at my son's school he got his ipad the first day so thank you um, to Ms. androsky and the, and the staff there and, and the schools i know there were several other schools that issued ipads in the first day and I, I'm very impressed by that. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, the stuff, the bus events were fantastic. Um, and thank you to transportation and those bus drivers that were involved with that, getting out there in the community. And, and uh, that was, I'm always impressed with um, our community support with things like stuff, the bus. The last thing I have is I uh, leave after this meeting to drive down to Fort Lauderdale for still the Douglas Commission meeting. We're going to meet uh, tomorrow and Thursday. And, um, you know, if there were if anything from this board that you would like me to express or if there's ever anything that you would, um, you have questions about, you know, in board meeting or workshop is the perfect time, I guess, to do that. But I would certainly be willing to you know, take anything that you all have to that meeting. But, um, you know, be on the safety committee, uh, you know, I have, I have an opportunity to give input and I value that input opportunity. And, you know, that are on that safety and security committee that we have here in the school district. And so there's a lot of work that's going on behind the scenes. Um, and even in our shade session days, we talked about security matters. And that's things that this board is making decisions on. So we think you know, we're all a part of this. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Young. I attended the Purple Heart Breakfast along with Mr. Mullen, Mr. Bishop, Dr. Hebert, and um, it was quite a nice little breakfast. I love hearing on the um, on the white table up there. What do they call that? People that are lost. This one lady was just in tears and couldn't really talk. Ghost Star Family. Ghost Star, thank you. Ghost Star Family. Um, and this one little lady from Michigan, Hispanic. She was very eloquent as she talked about her loss and the fact that her other son is serving right now. So, good job. I was listening to both of y'all and I listened to other things that everyone here has said and it, it, it's dawned on me. Do you know how much we do outside sitting here and voting on stuff on Tuesdays? <laughs> we are involved in about everything in the community and we can things that benefit the teachers big time, things that benefit the students. Uh, we don't just sit in a chair and, and vote on something that someone brings to us. We get out there and work, and we work all the time. And I know, uh, gosh, a couple of weeks ago, when we were going to the different schools, just meeting with the, you know, the five, six in a row, as fast as you could go, you went to schools. 
and we're learning about them and what can we can do to help. We're asking the, the parents, what can we do to help? And they tell us that we do it. And I know just something today, so uh, we had a call about it, something that we can do repair to the school. It's repaired. They sent someone straight out. We, you know, you have to know about it to be able to repair it. I, I'm just pleased with all of us that we don't uh, act like some politicians or politicians and get elected and that's, that's the end of the deal. We get elected and we just start working as hard as we can and as long as we can. So I appreciate all of you all guys. Thank you. Well, I'll do um, Mr. Dodd's comment to the school board and then commissioners because that, that memorandum was, I was pleased to see it in our packet and um, we probably should put it on the consent so just we could have discussed it and said thank you publicly for it. They have another placeholder on the next board meeting. Good, good. Send it to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did my first value adjustment board meeting. I had to talk to Angela Vick's office. Uh, Georgette Tauter was so kind and, and um, uh, explained after we were through, um, she sat with me and showed me the whole site, which I looked at before, so she was very good. So enjoyed that, and they elected me vice chairman. <laughs> so, um, so we'll do that. But it was a nice meeting, and everybody was good. And then Mr. Dodd checked to make sure I was there. <laughs> but I started uh, I started yesterday and this morning. I'm, I'm over at Rock Pressure, stick a little thing, stickies on the little kids coming in from K and K and enjoy seeing some of my students that I had in my classroom at Christopher High School bringing their children to our public schools um, and saying hi and getting my hugs. Um, but everything seems to be working and, and I have to compliment uh, Principal Curtis over at Rock Pressure because before he let me leave the school he made me sign off I need school improvement. <laughs> and uh, that went off with us too. But um, pleased with a lot of the comments that the kids are seeing. My daughter's a teacher at the Central Middle and she had a, a great first day. Um, so I think we're off to a good start. That's so great. Um, I had a chance on Monday to visit a number of schools and just excitement everywhere. Um, as Ms. Bryant know, very well knows, I did my annual spend time with my wife at her, in her classroom. And I know others of you all you know, uh, are involved in, in doing things like that. So uh, the, the, you know, I have to say again, I think the calendar committee did a great job giving those days ahead um, of the school year. I, didn't, I, I felt like teachers were as prepared as they could be in so many ways. And I don't think we could ever give them enough time because they're always going to you know, want to plan more and do more. But uh, it, it certainly beats showing up one day and the next day the kids are coming in. Um, I've done the calendar committee and that was one thing that was not negotiable for all three of the groups that we were, those were, that's what the teachers asked for, and that was not negotiable for us to, to change or alter, even though we would like to see the state say, change the date to, on the 10th, the move will be on the 10th. I, I agree. Right school next year on Saturday. I want to share with you uh, <laughs> one of the coolest things um, that happened yesterday that, uh, that I just think epitomizes the Citrus County school system. At Lacanto Primary, the uh, parent-teacher organization installed a new buddy bench. And this bench it serves this purpose. It's that students can go there and sit on the bench because they need a friend to play with or they wanted someone who uh, would spend time with them. And on the first day of school, you can all see the buddy bench had two students immediately as the story goes, that person sat down and two students um, came right over. And I, I thought of Miss Hemel because I know Miss Hemel, you make that speech all the time, how you worry and want to make sure somebody graduates and has a friend. And I thought, man, that buddy bench is uh, the right direction. We don't think sometimes of these things as safety and security. That is safety and security at work. It really is because a child who has a friend like that is uh, is in a good mental place or, or has someone to talk to. So uh, I just commend uh, LPS. I know we do things like that all around our schools, but I just wanted to lift them out. Um, we have a couple of things going on. Uh, one I wanted to just quickly share. Had a great educational technology meeting. We met the week 
um, of planning, and uh, that was a very intense, a uh, lot of stuff going on, one-to-one -one initiatives, window upgrades, networking, uh, something that you're gonna, you may hear about, um, Class Link, which is our single sign-on system. We all approved it. Um, really, we're working on it, and something you probably won't have to hear about, but it does impact our, our, um, our staff, is something called Track It application. And this is an application that our uh, technology um, aides and our specialists are using to take care of technology issues, know what they, you know, when someone has an issue and to, to address it, and then if they need to upgrade it and send it to TRC and have them address it, all of that can be done and it's monitored and it's, it's followed up. So I'm encouraged to see how that, that develops um, in that particular system, you know, because it is a different. Um, Mr. Dodd is probably aware of this, but there's been something that it just, I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I think we need to keep it on our radar. I was at FHSAA Appeals, and a conversation was the South Florida, South Gulf Football Officials Association that has a huge dispute over pay. And today, and I don't know, Mr. Dodd, if you saw this, FHSAA revoked that um, the organization, these are the officials that um, did the officiating for the football games. The, the challenge is, and, and this is a, a difficulty in amateur sports all around the country, is we are struggling to find officials. And if anybody wants to volunteer time and they want to be a coach, please go be an official in some sport that you love because we need you. But the challenge is, this impacts play, it impacts our schools. And so it, um, I commend FHSAA, because that, was, that wasn't an easy thing that they did, but they pretty much said we're not gonna be held hostage. Um, we have some things coming up that uh, I want, if you put on your schedule, um, we have a legislative delegation session that's September 23rd. Uh, from two to four, I kind of put this pencil in already. This is, you know, as we know, this is when we talk to the, to the delegation. It's not um, for today, but I, I would ask if you would start thinking about um, our board's platform or issues that we, you know, we talked about a few of them today that we want to communicate with our delegation uh, publicly. Um, we may you know, also have those sidebar conversations with them, but I think they're, you know, this is our opportunity to, to talk to them. So safety and security issues, if there's something that we can do. Um, we talked about flexibility when it comes to dollars coming to us. Um, these are some things that we, we may want to uh, to communicate. Along those lines, I'm sorry. Yes, um, so it's earlier this year, right? Because I think Ms. Kelton and I came back after the December. Is, is that because I think it's because session is yes, because yeah. it's right because right of the election. This is correct. Okay. So every other year they switch it. This year's January with right. the upcoming. And so that will typically will be for the chairman. And are are you talking? Would you like us to yeah. be there or, or really? Well, right, right now I honestly wanted us to be to have okay. that date so that we could start that conversation right. of, of okay. things we'd like to include. Uh, Florida School Board Association is going to be meeting. Um, I want to say it's August 22nd, um, and I'll be heading over uh, for that to begin our legislative platform. And then, yeah, and so we'll we'll want to see what comes out of that. If you recall, last year, Florida School Board Association took a very different approach to the legislative platform. It was less a laundry list of we want this and more of a conversation of these are, are things that we believe we can improve the school system if we had flexibility, opportunity, and, and I think as a result, a lot of what we put in there, we can point back to legislation passing, which has not always been the case with FSBA in the last number of years. So I, I, I think that approach is also good for us as a local board to communicate that and this comes into this next piece. You may have seen the article that uh, Commissioner Carnahan was looking to bring up the Baker Act facility for Citrus County. I don't think I have to convince this board we really need one in Citrus County for our young people. 
And, um, and that's something I think I, that's not to say it's completely a legislative issue, but it, it does play a role. And the legislature was very good this year with our, uh, with the superintendent's request for those elementary behavioral specialists that we've been able to get in there. Mental health, we've talked about, is the crux. I believe that plays a huge role in safety and security. So I think, you know, Ms. Powers, if you think about some of those mental health things that we, you know, could start to incorporate, um, I think we need to, to put those in. And if we can come together and, and maybe, you know, start at the next workshop uh, with that. Is there an interest by this board to send a letter of support to the Board County Commission regarding a um, Baker Act facility? You know, being in Citrus County, of a screening facility, because I, I know that's something we have and we have stated in different meetings, but I don't know if that's something you know. If you all, um, if you are, if you do get the board, the, the chair direction to do that, I have no problem putting that letter together um, and sending it. If you would send Miss Lisa some of the, the things that you'd like us to thank and, hold, and lift out to them, and then I can incorporate that, Mr. Bradshaw, is that acceptable to do it that way? I want to make sure that we're we're doing the transparency correctly. And, and so if they send, if you send that to Miss Lisa, and then we can begin doing that, Mr. Dodd. Yeah, no, I was just. Um, I am all for having a, a big rack receiving facility in Citrus County, so I would be in agreement would like to do that. I think it's a good idea. Um, and I think Commissioner Kennard, too, was uh, on being part of that, and maybe Mr. Kennard did by me. Oh, I meant Kennard. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. I actually meant uh, okay. nothing against Mr. Uh, no. Commissioner Carnahan. So, so um, thank you for correcting all the, all the focus we have now on mental health in our schools, I mean, it would be a natural progression, I think, that we could have a, a facility with counselors and availability for the season. So I think it would be great. Yeah. It's a great need for us. And Mr. Dodd, if you would maybe send um, to Ms. Lisa if you have any specific thoughts that we can include in that, because you know we can't write the letter together. But I, if you send some notes, then I can incorporate some of those notes um, in that. I think that's correct. Yes, and just bring back and forth. Um, and then um, so so that um, the facility. Um, I'm looking here. Uh, Something I wanted to lift out was uh, Miss Hamill. Wonderful job with the podcast, and Miss um, Blair, you did a great job. If you haven't had a chance to listen to uh, sit down with the superintendent as the school year starts, there's a podcast. Go to the website. You can go on, on social media and find it. Um, I hope you do more of those. That was, that was a great um, opportunity and. <laughs> oh, was it video too? No. Oh, yeah. was it? Yes. <laughs> I was thinking, did I miss something? Because I, you know, because there are a video or one version. Too. Um, you know, you t you talked about. Um, I, I think it was either Miss Miss Bryant brought up uh, or Miss Powers. So I apologize, but we talk about in when we're putting together the legislative platform. You know. We get a call. A lot of us get calls or we meet somebody at any event that we are, the grocery store, and a lot of people don't realize what happens next. There's an email, a phone call, some communication, and yes, that means sometimes it's on the weekend when you know Mr. Mullen will respond to an email that I've written, Dr. Heber, Mr. Bishop, the superintendent regularly, will be like, I'm on it, we're taking care of it. That's, and and we, I had an issue yesterday, it was, I should say an issue, I had a communication with a couple of families yesterday when I was at an event, and by this after, by this morning, we had already started communications, but by mid-morning, the team was on it. That's local government. I'm concerned this, this effort by the state to 
um, have the leadership of our school systems and our educational system being taken place at the state board level, when they're not seeing those parents, those teachers that will contact. I had, by the way, a great staff member yesterday that said, thank you. Please let the superintendent know how pleased I am with the leadership team at my school. And those are communications that you're not going to get very easily if you just talk to the State Board of Education about what's happening in your classroom. So we need to remind not just ourselves, but we also need to make sure we remind the public and our legislators, local government is the best operating system that we can have. And I think we just need to, you know, um, talk about those highlights of that. We still have actually 10 minutes, so anybody have anything else? I'm sorry, no, no, go ahead, I forgot, I gotta make sure. Thank you, Ms. Powers. We, it, it, I was at a swim meet, a state swim meet over the summer and ran into, and I say this because this is what we serve all of us do, that, that people don't get to. I ran into the vice president of the Florida School Board Association who was there as well. And we just, we spat, send a couple minutes just kind of comparing what's happening in each other's district. I was exhausted. There is so much that each district is taking on and doing. Um, and it's an exciting time, but it, sometimes it's a little scary um, for us too. And, uh, was that Laura Otero, you say? No, it was Chris. It, uh, it, it was Chris. Um, Chris, uh, Pat Chris Patricia. Chris, Chris, Chris Patricia. Yes. Yeah, Patricia. And, um, yeah, so it, uh, but we, I think, you know, Florida School Board Association has, is going to have an exciting year. I'm very excited about the leadership team and that it's going to uh, really, you know, really is a good thing. And Ms. Bryant, you're going to be also, we're going to be at a workshop for Florida School Board for the Ms. No, I just want to thank you all for all being at the teachers and it's going to be a great day. We have about three minutes left. So how the kids? <laughs> <laughs> then Miss Powers, Miss Powers went to theme parks for the last <laughs> on her little break, and she loves theme parks. <laughs> That, that, hey, that's what a, a real Grandma Mimi does. That's what you get. That's what the grandkids to the Harry Potter. And she loves Harry Potter. I do not like Harry Potter at all, but I love my grandchildren, so I enjoyed seeing their faces. So I'll, I'll bring up another item. Yeah. Um, I was very pleased that um, our uh, Code Justice Academy at WTC, uh, Captain Canner uh, with the Sheriff's Office, though they planned um, an active assailant training through the FLETC, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center from Glencoe, Georgia. They did that last week. Um, and I think all of the SROs were there for it. Uh, it was the week before school, timing-wise, uh, it was a little bit rough, but they were able to make it to a lot of their open houses on Friday because of the four-day training. And uh, that to bring a program of that caliber here uh, to Citrus County um, saved the county a lot of money uh, because they didn't have to send all those officers to Glenville, Georgia. So those, uh, that staff came here and they were certified and they received a certification through the, the through FLETC, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. So uh, kudos to that group and that training focus with our school resource officers. Thanks. Yeah. And um, actually, Buster's been been busy covering us. And thank you, <laughs> you, yes. uh, you, you. I think he, did, Buster, did you cover the that SRO? I saw it somewhere. Maybe it was on Facebook. You covered though 
the, the article you did on the Guardians and that training, and I think Buster, you actually participated in in but that as well. Um, oh, yeah. So he got a chance to really experience what what those Guardians were. Uh, how was your breathing? Uh, apparently, uh, Chief Grant said I sounded like Darth Vader. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I do honor the, the individuals who go through that sort of stuff on a regular basis. And, uh, I, I could not find it in myself to do something. Did, uh, well, at least you were breathing, so this is a good thing because I'm not sure I wouldn't have been so scared I held my breath. <laughs> The picture that Ronald had, we need to pull it up into a three by four poster and put it on the front door of every one of our schools. Buster, I believe, took that photo. No, no. I think you did take that picture. I think it was Matt that was very, uh, very gifted photographer. Yeah. It has been for many, many years. For us, so. <laughs> Monday, uh, you got a nice picture of uh, Principal Bossy. Um, I saw that. I don't know if it made the, the, the print version, but I know I saw it online. <laughs> Um, so it was just, oh, that was a great show, yeah. too. Is there anyone here wishing to come before the board? It is 5.15. No one here? Is there any reason we can't adjourn? We are adjourned. Great.